Simply Scuba presents the Deco Stop Podcast. Hi everybody and welcome to the Deco Stop Podcast. I'm Mark, I'm joined with Sean, who rumour has it, uh. once rescued a fireman out of a tree. Uh, it was a tree, but it was one of those inflatable trees. He was a bit drunk, <laughs> and I'm not too sure he was a fireman. Anyway, we're back, guys. We've had a two-week yeah. hiatus. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't see it, but we are beautifully tanned from our, our holiday in the Bermuda Triangle. I can't even say the word. That triangle the place. Bermuda. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> uh, you know, we were channeling some fun. I meant we were on holiday. Uh, we weren't doing anything yeah. illegal. Nah, yeah, it's good nah to be we're uh, we're back to talk about some scuba diving stuff. I thought we, thought um, we so had a conversation that we were going to turn this into a dog and cat podcast, Mark. Well, not <laughs> not scuba diving. We can do. My two dogs often try and get involved, don't they? Whenever they see the postman, that they do. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a note slash spoiler. If you've not seen the the latest episode of Ask Mark, oh yeah, I wasn't sure how much you could cut that out no literally you go you hear that and then you're like i've got to sort my dogs out then i then it just cuts it does one of the, the bar and tone the boop so, and we're back that's what we need to spend budget on is uh soundproofing my studio that's, <clears> it. that's it that's it that that or training my dogs or just putting up like curtains oop, in oop, front oop. of my front door <laughs> we'll just buy you some curtains all right. That'd be good. Uh, anyway, so website updates for simplyscuba.com. You should definitely go sort of visit it and uh, sort of buy some stuff. Yeah. Um, so we had a, a big drop from Apex and Aqualung and Fourth Element. Uh, so we've restocked all sorts of stuff. So if you've been to the website and whatever it is that you've been looking for has been out of stock, it should be back in stock uh, at the moment. Everything from the new uh, sort of Apex Lifeline reels and uh, sort of torches, the Lunar Range, um, Aqualung, all their sort of little bits and bobs and masks and fins and wetsuits and all sorts of exciting stuff. Fourth, ele- blah, blah, blah. Fourth Element. Funnily enough, Fourth Element Arctic undersuits were were selling really, really well, and we had to restock a lot of them. Yeah. Um, it's it's turning is. cold, and uh, people are sort of just drying off their wetsuits, putting their wetsuits away, and getting back into their dry suits. Um, I know I am, good lord. Um, but me yeah, too, and Fourth I don't Element, even dive, mate. I'll just wear around the house. Exposure protection. I mean, I went to walk the dogs the other day, and I did consider putting my dry suit on. It was that wet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah all sorts of uh, sort of restocks Uh, so yeah we're you've only been allowed back into that dog park for some other stuff that you were doing so (laughs) the funny thing is is that um, one one of my friends that uh, that I sort of meet up at the uh, the dog park he um he dressed up. I can't remember what it was. I think it was someone's birthday or something. And you know um, Scuba Steve from um, Big Daddy, the yes. Adam Sandler film? Yep. He actually got one of those um, costumes. Nice. And he was like walking the dogs whilst wearing it. And it was like the one day that I took the dogs to a different dog park. <laughs> he probably got all looks and said, <clears throat> oh, Mark's going to spot me. I know he likes the <laughs> scuba diving thing. <laughs> Mate, I'm on the other side of the other side of the town. Yeah, that's it. I was like, oh, no, I, I went to Ashenbank. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. And then he spent the rest of his day crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> otherwise, um, if you watch the uh, the deep dive this um, this week, I did mention that something was like going to, something really exciting was going to arrive on the uh, on the website. You've and been it still saying hasn't. that. Um, You've been saying that know, the past like us. three years, Mark. The problem. <laughs> pre deco stop, with... mate. You were like, oh, something's coming. <laughs> with everything that's gone on recently from the lockdown to Brexit and all that kind of stuff, promises mean nothing that's anymore true. when it comes to shipping products. So, um, yeah, we, we get all of these, oh, yeah, this this like new thing. Okay, great, yeah, you put your order in. And they're like, yeah, it'll be with you on Friday. Liars. Yep. Um, or just just honest over-promises. Um, thanks, thanks yeah, Boris, yeah. for putting that in people's <laughs> mindsets. <laughs> You a hole. So, uh, whoa. Um, I said so, a hole. Um, I didn't say the other word. It's fine. Yeah, but people know what you're talking about, Sean. You've got to yeah. be careful on these kind of things. Nah. <laughs> oh, the intro. I accuse stuff as of doing dodgy money stuff in Blue Mood. I can't even say the word. <laughs> <laughs> T- 
tax evasion. Tax haven. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what was I? Do- oh yeah, so <laughs> we're hoping it's going to be next. <laughs> Woo! We're hoping it's going to be next week that um, that the exciting thing is going to turn up. But it also means that it crosses over with another exciting thing. Um, we we first tried to like space them out, but now I think they're all going to arrive all at the same time. Of course. Um, so yeah. So basically next is, week there's going to be a vomit of stuff. You've had nothing and it's just going to go... Bleh. <laughs> yeah. The important thing is, is that you head over to our Instagram, head over to the website, uh, sort of sign up to the emails because we'll put out uh, sort of email shots that sort of break down everything that's uh, sort of new on the website. We'll also mention it on Instagram so there'll be sort of posts about the uh, sort of the latest and newest exciting things. Right. So make sure that you head over there and uh, sort of subscribe. And um, subscribe wherever you're listening to this. Give it a thumbs up, all that social media good stuff. Um, talking about social media channel updates, um, Ooh, what that have we was, got on YouTube, Sean? That was a beautiful segue, Mark. That was a beautiful segue. 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 Well, so, well. obviously the votes are back. Obviously there was a vote last week, mm. but I wasn't here, so that didn't exist. Um, but now we can talk about this week's votes, because, you know, we're back. Yeah. So, here we go, guys. Let me just refresh the page. Let me just... So, yeah. as of <laughs> recording... Out of the three videos that we might be filming, in third place, we have five steps to become a better diver at 27%. Uh, Second one is hacks for cold water diving, um, which is pretty cool. And in first place, crazy myths about scuba diving with 42%. Mm. So that's probably going to be the winner. Um, I'm 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 going to say that now. 112 votes so far. It's been up for a couple of hours. So well done. Um, I was... I was going to say I was the second person to vote, but I don't vote on these things, so just ignore what I just was about to say. Um, I don't know what I was going to say that, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. So there we go. That's that's YouTube, and that's all of social. Thanks for watching. Uh, safe diving. Okay, mate. so on to scuba news. No, you know, <laughs> no, but yeah. So yeah, you want to find out about some crazy myths about scuba diving? Wait till next Saturday. Um, obviously, we haven't been doing product videos. Um, obviously being on holiday backlog and also as well um, like Mark was obviously previously saying we were expecting certain things to come into stock they haven't so there's been a delay so we have had a pause on products at the moment but hopefully we'll get them back up and running and a nice steady flow from the 18th of October so they'll be back obviously we've been posting out on our community tab uh, other product videos as well so you know to to pique your interest so but yeah they'll be they'll be back on the 18th um and obviously we are back as well so we are both back in the company um so it is business yeah. as usual up until yeah. really the end of end of december i guess that's like over the yeah. holiday period <clears throat> that's when our next our next big thing is um mm. but yeah that, that 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 that's the norm as well um this is something that obviously this is a conversation that we've been having for a while and obviously that we want to speak about uh, uh well, well, i want to get basically the, the viewers involved in that so we obviously are an online store and we want to aim our videos towards more at the website so i'm yeah. going to reach out to you guys and girls what do you want to know or what would your what would your um ideas for certain product types of videos because obviously we do the we do the boxing uh, oh, the unboxing video yeah let's do the boxing this is how we box this yeah, product yeah. So it's a reverse <laughs> see let's how do easily that. it fits in this big box exactly <laughs> um so we could do that uh but also um yeah just just different stories we do else? the unboxings we do the yeah. top fives so just want to know your thoughts when it comes to products and stuff because when we obviously so it's been a year since you know internet fusion took over simply scuba and we you know we're getting back into our into our into our well we are back you know into the to the swing, swing of, things. of things that's the word so yeah if there's anything anything at all when it comes to products in the different styles of videos let us know your thoughts down below and then yeah we'll we'll try and get them done which is really really cool um and obviously a couple yeah. of weeks ago uh, we were filmed at Outer Beach and we were doing some bits and we were doing some scuba tips videos. Um, obviously, because of certain Fridays and certain holidays that are coming up in the foreseeable future, obviously, we've got to run the production for that because we weren't too sure what was going on with types of seasonal offerings. Um, but, yeah. 
they want to go full swing into it whereas in last year we didn't really do that but we couldn't because we barely had any stock um so mm-hmm. scuba tips yeah my original thought scuba tips is now going to start we start going live in november but that means also i'm not i'm not rushing it basically i don't want to rush it to 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 take it out we filmed quite a lot of them so yeah beginning of november our new series scuba tips will be going live as well which is really really cool mm-hmm. anyway that's that's youtube instagram so technically We've been doing this this road to 6,000, 6,000 followers. Technically, we have hit that. Um, I do believe, as of recording, it's about 6,034 or 35 subscribers, which is great. Um, but I'm yep. still going to push the road to 6,000 probably for the next couple of weeks or so, purely for the fact that Instagram followers... They're not. They're not. They're not a fickle bunch. But yeah, you think, oh, wicked! I've hit. I've hit. A, you know, I've hit a milestone, and then give it two days later, and just a load of people unfollow you for for no reason. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like everyone's tastes change. It's not like YouTube where you, you hit that subscribe button and you still subscribe to them even if you don't, you know, watch their video. You know what I mean? You, you still stay in that person's feed. Um, so, yeah, so Road to 6000. So, like Mark obviously mentioned, if you want to get any updates about latest product drops, if you want to get inspired when it comes to scuba diving and all the different types of scuba diving that you can do, we share it all over on our Instagram. And we have a great community. There's lots of people commenting on there. Um, so, yeah, you can have nice awesome discussions with like-minded souls so yeah definitely head over to our instagram you'll find that pinned in the comments if you're watching slash listening to this on youtube if not go on instagram type in simply scuba and we will pop up um also talking about kind of instagram and uh, i kind of guess facebook um facebook have changed the way that they do stories now so you can now schedule your stories on uh, your you uh, sorry on Facebook and your Instagram. So now every time a video, one of our surface intervals, deep dives, ask marks, when they go live on YouTube, there is going to be a, a story popping up in your Instagram and in your Facebook feed as well, just to remind you that uh, yeah that the video has gone live as well, which is really really cool. Um, the only thing we need to do is to get ten thousand followers, so we can then actually link that video to that. There, that story to that video. Um, so mm. come on, guys, row to 10,000. That's going to take <laughs> forever. <laughs> um, it's taken a while just to get to 6,000, but anyway, doesn't mm. matter. It's all it's all good. Um, and lastly, just to round up the podcast, obviously, we nearly got a, a thousand followers over on Spotify, so that's growing really, really well. Um, for the first time ever in podcast history, and to be fair. Dare I say it, across all our social platforms, we've actually peaked at a younger audience. So normally we hit the 28 to 34 to 34 to 45 age yeah. crap. That's our normal mm. our demographic. Um, but we've actually started to peak now on the 23 to 27 year old. So there's younger okay. people listening to us, Mark, which I mm. thought was interesting. So hello to you young whippersnappers in your 20s <laughs> that were blatantly born after the year 2000 making me feel quite old or just around there um I was gonna say, being, that doesn't even make sense i know it's the year 2021 yeah i know <laughs> how, how are 20 1990 yeah you, you 1990s the 1990s the 90s, yeah it. yeah whatever anyway hello <laughs> welcome uh which is really really cool uh new new dive gear mark was uh new dive gear in september was our most popular episode streamed last month yeah um, so people, that makes sense. That's yeah. kind of what we're all about is like the dive equipment, believe it yeah. or not. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, we talk about unicorns, cats, and <laughs> embezzling money. That's the deco stuff. Firemen stuck in trees. Yeah, that's it. Fake <laughs> firemen stuck in inflatable trees. That's how we and, roll. And all Sean had with him at the time to help him get the firefighter out of the tree was a cat. Yep. He used the cat like a crampon. That's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's gonna. It was I an mean, amazing story. Yeah, I, w- I wish I was there. Yes, you, yeah, you weren't though. You weren't there. <laughs> and by the sounds of things, my mind certainly wasn't there as well. To do that sort of thing, <laughs> you know, you, you, your mind does not need to be in that place. Anyway, just uh, autopilot. Swift, yeah, autopilot. That was it. I'm just gonna get a cat and climb this and inf- climb this inflatable tree to save this fireman. 
Swiftly moving on, uh, last two notes about the podcast. We had 14,000 streams last year, or last last month, which again, is fantastic. Okay. And that cool. was across yeah. all over platforms. So 14,000 people uh, were listening to our beautiful, well, list, yeah, listening to our beautiful voices. <laughs> yeah. um, and what I'm also going to try and do with the podcast is check the RSS feed and see if I can mm. branch that out, if I can connect it to other RSS feeds so then... Uh, yeah, then, you know, the podcast is available on more podcast platforms. That is me. That is social. Thanks for okay, watching. Okay, on to Scuba News. So this is stuff that's uh, sort of piqued my interest. Whoa, adverts. God. That's, I've no. purposely, I've purposely this, not clicked that one. This way, I need to get the, like the information, but everything that you press on this website, if there's a link down in the description below, don't click it um, because there there is a cool video, but oh, it's it's the independent and their their like website just has so many ads and things. And you hit like the mute button and it goes to another web page. You hit the X, it opens a different web. Yeah, just don't. But the video itself is actually quite interesting. It's um, so this was in oh where is it? Uh, this is the only reason why I went to the website. Uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. It doesn't even say. That's it fantastic. Doesn't actually say. Um, so this was a um, a pair of divers somewhere. Doesn't even say. But they. Uh, I'm going to close it because the music is annoying. Um, yeah. And um, it's basically they they were cruising around. They were going for a, a dive, and a, um, a tiger shark kind of swims past. And um, and they're like, oh wow! But they notice that there's some ghost gear attached to the shark's uh, dorsal fin. There's a fishing hook just snagged and. Um, and they're like, right, we're going to do our best to uh, uh, sort of remove it. So whilst one of them is filming it, and the uh, the tiger shark is kind of cruising around the bottom, kind of looking around uh, for food, obviously. And um, I think they were a dive guide instructor, uh, sort of approaches the uh, the tiger shark sort of from the side. Um, it kind of like twitches a little bit, so uh, so the, the instructor kind of backs off for a moment, but then sort of goes in manages to uh, get the hook and just with one swift motion just whoosh, kind of whips it out and uh, the shark just kind of like oh, very casually um, sort of swims away so that was their uh, their good deed for the day but yeah a tiger a tiger shark man i mean granted it was its dorsal fin it's it's a little further away from the bitey end but still <laughs> oof <laughs> um you see this all the time with uh, like scuba divers removing like fishing net that's caught up around a a whale shark or a turtle mm. or something. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, you see like a fish hook in the shark's mouth, and then with uh, like either chainmail gloves or just a lot of bravery, um, <laughs> someone like yanks it out. Um, I think this is the first time I've seen like a fishing hook stuck in the uh, in the dorsal fin being removed. Um, so that was a nice little story that I well, thought. Um, <clears throat> it's just a shame that it's on the Independence website, so uh, it's just ads everywhere yes and um and you can't adjust the volume to it um, no as i found out as my ears were bleeding when i clicked <laughs> on it that's why i closed it and said do you know what i'm just gonna let they that must can, that they stay. must put an overlay um in the website code so wherever you click it just opens up a new yeah. web page and it's ugh, yeah anyway Next news story, um, China is going nuts at um, Ikea because they, um, I think they kind of, they posted on Ikea's UK Twitter account that they're thinking about discontinuing the, um, the Blahage. Okay. If you have no idea what that is, the Blahage, um, it's in like probably not, well, every single one of my videos recently. Yeah, it's, the, it's the stuffed... Is the stuffed animal shark that I have in my background, um, and apparently Asia love this thing to death. There are like dedicated social media accounts to people who like just take pictures of the shark in like weird and wacky places. Um, they they get multiples of them. There's a picture of them like sitting around a dinner table. Um, some of them they put glasses on them and all that kind. Of, they they love this shark. So due to the, I don't know, Brexit, um, lack of delivery drivers, all the kind of stuff that's going on at the moment. Um, don't they were basically Brexit, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that went just as planned. Yeah, um, no worries. 
Anyway, so due due to that, um, so I think it was IKEA in the UK were basically saying, okay, so due to supply issues, um, we probably won't be able to get hold of these. Um, but then um, in like the second part of the tweet, the uh, uh, the IKEA support staff member wrote that the the shark may only be available for a short period of time, as it is set to be discontinued from April twenty twenty two. So. If anyone in the UK um, has been paying attention at all over the past couple of weeks, uh, and even anyone around the world, it was basically the the same thing that happened with the toilet paper shortage and with uh, with the petrol shortage that we've been having recently. There was a vague uh, sort of report of like stock issues of this shark. So what that basically meant was. Everyone and their brother went to Ikea and just bought every single one of these sharks available. And now, of course, no one has any stock of it. Um, it's that stock shortage, panic buy. I, I have to get like as many of these sharks as possible because I won't be able to get them ever again. Um, and on a similar note, I'll note that um, there is a current supply issue on Simply Scuba own brand equipment. I was uh, literally <laughs> just about to say that. <laughs> I did see a um, a bookstore, I think it was, and then they they had a post in their uh, in their window, basically saying, "Oh, there's um, there's an apparent book shortage. Um, please panic buy all of your books here." <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, um, wait, people are so silly, aren't they? Yeah, but um, but yeah, so um, there's there's a shortage of um, stuffed animal sharks apparently. So if you can get hold of one, do. Um, sell it on eBay like the PlayStation for five hundred pounds. Yeah, or more people will do it. Someone We're going to start it. auctioning off uh, Brucey. We'll do that next year. That's going to say we'll sell yeah. that, and then that can that can go towards the website. That might buy us a he's, studio. He's now limited. Yeah, he's now limited edition. Uh, I might look after him a bit better. Um. <laughs> I mean, I've got one too, but yeah. Apparently, um, Greg, who uh, who still works for the company, but sort of behind the scenes, he um, his dog loved it, and uh, and he had to like take it off of him because he started to like try and tear him apart. <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't no, do he's it. limited edition. <laughs> he is limited edition. Hey. Anyway, um, a, um, a set of divers in uh, in Spain or off the coast of Spain have found a lot. Of gold coins, um, and uh, the uh, the discovery has been described as enormously valuable. Oh. Um, so these are Roman gold coins um, that were uh, discovered off the east coast of Spain. Obviously, they're not saying exactly where it was, um, but they were diving off the island or ported Portizol in oh good Zabia. It's X-ray. Uh, alpha, but with that like little flick over the top. Oh, what's, uh, Bravo, what's India. Oh, yeah, I know. I knew a. Um... It's not a circumflex. No, it's, it's one of the others. Anyway, Spain, and they they found um, eight coins, um, and then of course they alerted archaeologists. They returned and they found another forty five. Um, so there's 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 a lot down there. They also found some. Um, uh, like nails and what they basically think is that this is like a a literal treasure chest like a wooden chest full of gold coins and they think um that it, it was kind of like some wealthy person or something in the area um either like raiders or something was coming or they just wanted to hide or they would just had too much wine um and basically they <laughs> this gold chest just ended up in the uh, in the water obviously they couldn't uh, sort of recover it and um and it was just sort of left there nice. and um because it's because it's gold um they're in fantastic condition um some of them date between the end of the fourth century and the beginning of the fifth century so they're pretty old mm. um and um yeah, it's just like this is like an enormously significant and valuable find, um, and they've uh, I think they donated them to a, a local museum who are going to like preserve them, and uh, and then put them on display. And uh, yeah, that's just pretty cool. It just goes to show that there's still stuff out there that people haven't found. 
Um, I cannot and... wait for Oceans 14, where the guys have to go into that mu- uh, the museum to steal those coins. Steal a bunch of coins. Yeah. <laughs> Oceans 14. From, from, a, from a casino. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. The museum becomes a casino, casino that's, in yeah. Vegas. Hey, hey. Well, there you go. So these, these coins go on a world tour. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, you've got to go to That's Vegas it. when it's a world That's tour. It. Then they get Eddie Izzard to make a 3D hologram version of them. Is it Eddie? That, is he, that was is the he, second. Is he called yeah. Eddie Izzard? Yeah, that was in the still. second movie. No, no. I know he's in it, but is he actually oh. called Eddie Izzard? Yeah. Because obviously he's... Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah. That, oh, that, has he changed his identity? I believe so. That, but that, that's for, definitely for not tax, a conversation. tax avoidance. That's definitely <laughs> in, not a conversation to have during a DK stop. Let's swiftly move oh. on. But yeah, I think that's cool, though. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's always the thing. When you're swimming along and you see something shiny and you go, oh, you swim down, you like dust it off and it's like nothing interesting. It's just like a piece of plastic. And you're like, oh. <sighs> there, there is that one day I'm going to find some gold <laughs> but exactly. it, of course it, it's not going to be at one of the popular dive sites or at a, an inland dive site you're not going to find anything at stony cove why not um, just move this rock well, actually, oh my gosh one of the uh, one of the manufacturers i can't remember who it was uh so like a year or two ago before lockdown they um they went all across i think it was the south coast of the uk and they hid certain coins um in areas i think like plain to see they didn't like put it under the ground because that would just be tough and it was basically a, a treasure hunt and yeah if you found one of these coins if you found like the red one then you got a dive computer or something if you found this then you got a torch or whatever um and yeah i think all of them were found or at least recovered that's cool I thought, oh yeah that's that's a bit of fun um you wouldn't want the pit think, the the coin that gives you a free mask strap, though. And it's like <laughs> at the deepest point in like some middle ca- like tech cave thing, like really hard to get to. And you want a mask strap. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Someone lays on a full like grid search <laughs> and then <laughs> they manage to track it down. And, and then, then you're you like, yep, some... here's a mask strap wrapper. <laughs> yeah, some kid just goes swimming and he gets a rebreather. It's like, oh, fantastic. <laughs> You spelt my name wrong as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, sticking with the uh, with the south coast of the UK uh, in Dorset, a um, a fisherman <laughs> reeled in a lionfish. Um, so normally, lionfish. They they kind of, they hang around the Indian Ocean. They have been spreading north up into the Mediterranean, around the Americas. They've been having just hell with them because they were introduced there, I think in like the 80s or something, and no real natural predators, but they eat everything and they breed like lionfish. So there's thousands of them now and they just can't get rid of them fast enough. Now apparently we have them off our south coast. Um, Fantastic. Which is, yeah, yeah, I know ocean temperatures are sort of going up, which is that sort of double-edged sword. It means I don't have to wear quite as much exposure protection, but still, it's not a good thing. No. Um, and yeah, now we're getting lionfish in our waters. They are just going to be everywhere at some stage. Um, I mean, I suppose it makes British diving a bit more colourful, a bit different, um, a bit more venomous. Uh, we don't tend to have too many venomous species in our waters um but yeah this might be a a thing where you kind of have to be a little bit careful about where you um sort of go swimming or something in case there are lionfish you don't want to get pricked by one of those um Uh. so the um i think the fish has gone off to um uh where is it uh, they're basically being examined by the british record fish committee um to basically verify um, using like a variety of evidence um, to uh, sort of make sure that, yeah, so A, he didn't just buy this at some exotic fish store, no. um, put it on a hook, put it in the water and then go, ha ha, look what I found. Uh, they basically need to um, sort of check that, yeah, this is like legitimately um, sort of pulled in off of Dorset. But 
Yeah, it's truth. If, if you are diving off uh, to the UK and you do spot a, uh, a lionfish, do let them know. Um, mm. Try and take sort of pictures and evidence and uh, like location and whatnot. Uh, because, yeah, if they are sort of heading to our waters, we need to document it as much as possible so that they can uh, sort of either, I don't know, create some kind of defence. Uh, it's called a wall. We need to build a wall, a lionfish wall. Build a wall. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, the exact shape truth. of the lionfish but somehow other, <laughs> other fish can get through but it's like a laser a laser underwater laser wall and it reacts well they have that i think i've, I've mentioned it on the podcast before there was a, a fish farm uh, i can't remember where it was but it has this like ai and the AI like looks at all of the fish, and if it sees a um, a parasite, it fires a laser and like kills it as the fish swims past. There we go. So yeah, that's, that's what we need. kind of what we need. Some we... kind of net with lasers or, and AI, <laughs> or the the dream can finally come true, Mark, and we can get oh, no. sharks with lasers. <laughs> we can put lasers on UK sharks. And they could go hunt down lionfish and kill them with their lasers. Yeah, but which which is which is worse, like a bunch of lionfish, or like a rogue, a single rogue shark with a laser attached to its face? Lionfish, lionfish all the way. <laughs> I'm talking about every shark. Every shark needs to have lasers on it. <clears throat> there we go. That solves the problem. What's the worst that could happen? Just just make um, sure that the line the uh, the lasers in lionfish mode, and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you got to flick that toggle switch. On its <laughs> yeah, you <back>. got. <laughs> you got to do the right sequence, <laughs> and you'll be fine. Oof. Um, <laughs> another story that um, that caught my interest was uh, Orange County uh, had a rather nasty oil spill uh, last week. And um, there are a few videos. There was one of um, sort of a bunch of people like walking across the uh, the beach and there's like oil slicks. They put up um, all sorts of protection measures to try and like collect it and stop it from spreading. Uh, but yeah, this, this is like made a huge mess. There was another video of a uh, or from a uh, oil rig. Uh, which they believe is where it's basically an uh, I think it was an underwater pipeline split mm. and you can see the chap and he's kind of like looking down over the railing and you can see this uh, like oil slick just sort of spreading out from uh, from where he was and um, yeah I think someone's going to be in trouble mm -hmm. for this one um, but it just it just like reinforces we need to move away from oil uh, as quickly as possible it's it's not it's not a good thing. Um, no, it's oh, not. I'm just looking at a map. Apparently, um, sort of where uh, where it was, it was called Eureka. Uh, uh, Wonderful. Unfortunate, <clears throat> and, unfortunate name. Yeah, and the, it's kind of off Huntington Beach, and there's like this uh, this pipeline that leads towards Long Beach, um, and yeah, sort of just off of Huntington Beach and sort of Newport. That's where it was like first reported last Friday, Ooh. and yeah, of course, it just oil just spreads everywhere. So they're they're looking to uh, sort of keep things clean and collect it as best they can. So yeah, if you're planning a dive around there. Um, I wouldn't. Yeah, um, don't, don't. Un unless you until want it's all cleaned up. Yeah. Oh. Um, and the Ugh. the final news story. This was, I think, it was last Sunday. Um, a group of cave divers in uh, in Poland. Um, they they went for what we believe. I think information is still sketchy from what I could find. Um, but it was like a, a training dive with students in the uh, Maria Concordia mine, and um, uh, basically three divers didn't come back um the first two so i think it was a group of six i read and mm. they they were carrying out sort of i presume cave diving skill development exercises um and when two of the group one instructor and one student didn't surface at the uh, sort of planned time one of the other uh, instructors grabbed a whole bunch of um, cylinders and, uh, and returned into the cave to try and uh, sort of find them. But none of them uh, returned. So dive site was uh, sort of closed, search and recovery, uh, sort of state fire service. They went in. 
I think the day after, I believe, they recovered the first pair. Um, and then on the following day, or maybe a day or two later, they recovered the third diver. It was getting harder and harder because uh, just worsening visibility, mm. but they um, they have recovered all three divers. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, do be careful, especially in overhead environments. Um, they are incredibly dangerous. And um, yeah, so of course now they're uh, sort of investigating, trying to uh, sort of work out what best they can to... Um, uh, sort of find out what happens but yeah do do be careful even on uh, sort of training dives uh, take it as uh, trying to think of the words as as best you can um, if you ever feel sort of out of your depths just turn around it's it's not worth going any deeper mm, definitely but yes yes um i thought it was worth mentioning um obviously sort of thoughts go out to the uh, to the families at this time mm. it's it's going to be horrible for them but um yeah if if you are planning a um even a training dive to sort of be be careful um in the weeks and months going forwards especially as things start to get colder as well because then you're adding more equipment it gets uh, sort of even harder yeah definitely um and uh, and that was it. If you have any interesting news stories that you've uh, sort of come across, uh, sort of by all means, pop a, uh, a link down into the uh, sort of comment section below. We'll take a look. Uh, if you've done anything interesting that you want mentioned on the podcast, then by all means, let us know down in the comments below, and we'll see if we can add it. And it also um, has to be scuba diving related. Please. Oh yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's not just oh, I took my dog for a walk and it caught the frisbee for the first time. Wow! As, as amazing as that is, well done, congratulations. But um, no, it's it's more to do with uh, with scuba diving. Yes, cool. All right. So with that segue kind of dealt with. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next we need to stop <clears throat> ending the segues on really bad news. I think that's the that's the lesson learned there. We've got to stick that in the no middle. There's no real good place. I know. Yeah, there's no good place to uh, to put it. No. Uh, but I do feel like I do still have to mention it. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, no, no, no. It's, it's It has to be said. You know what I mean? You've got to... Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, Mark. Yes. Yes. What is your product of the week? <clears throat> what is your product of the okay, week? Okay, so we're, we're in October. So we are officially in the <sighs> run-up to Christmas. As much as people, like, try and deny it... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm already looking for uh, sort of gift ideas because if you leave it to the last minute, then everything's out of stock yeah. and uh, and you kind of forget about things. Definitely. Um, and then there's there's not enough time. So I like to get it out of the way as early as possible. Um, so I was thinking about sort of gift ideas for scuba divers. I was thinking, oh, what what's like a good generic gift for a diver something fairly hefty it's it's not like a bolt snap or something but something they're always good stocking fillers um but no it's something like a, a main gift but it had it doesn't have to be too like specific because trying to buy dive equipment for someone that you you know but even still is quite tricky because mm. it's it's quite personal your dive equipment so i was thinking about right what would be great so i thought dive torches dive torches are that great sort of thing i mean i have a million dive torches just dotted around my house because i just love them to bits and they're so useful um but i was looking at the apex luna mini fantastic dive torch it's factory sealed so you never have to worry about unscrewing it and changing batteries or anything uh, even to recharge it you can recharge it from the outside so you just plug in the cable in the back and nice and compact but very tough and powerful so modern like lithium ion rechargeable batteries very powerful led light as well i think this is a thousand lumens so that's a fantastic kind of stepping point for night diving in blue waters but you can also use it quite competently in sort of fairly murky waters and it's really small and compact it comes in a bunch of different colors as well so it can sort of match their style and yeah it's that great sort of fairly big gift um so for a loved one and um it's it's a it'll be nice if they if they already have a dive torch then this is a nice 
backup dive torch uh, mm -hmm. or even a, a new primary dive torch which is more powerful than this and a more basic one and it's it's one of those things where you can never have too many i'd rather have like sort of an extra one and then just have this sort of extra backup torch mm -hmm. um and yeah the lunar mini just sort of sits in that sort of perfect sweet spot it can be a primary dive torch it can be a, a pretty powerful backup torch and um yeah it comes in apex's new sort of funky color range because mm. they they do their sort of like standard gunmetal gray but they also do the sort of lime green the orange and the purple which you're seeing more and more in the rest of their uh, sort of dive range so um yeah uh, so yeah, there'll be a link down in the description below if you want to check them out. They're all in stock, um, as I said. No, they're yeah, not. So they're There's, there quickly. Th yeah, no, sorry. There is no. Sh do not panic by the Luna Mini oh. dive torches. There's, there's, a there's nothing wrong. We Apex have got the uh, the military to uh, to yep. deliver uh, sort of these to local dive centres all around the world. <laughs> yep, they have. <laughs> I mean, it's not the British military. It's like. <clears throat> The Uzbekistan, I don't even know if that's a place. <laughs> if they still exist. If they still exist, <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Apex Luna. Yeah. Good dive torch. Good good brand. Good lineage. Line, lineage? Is that the right word? Lineage. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wicked. Nice one. So, Mark, my question mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. Obviously, scuba diving in 2020 was basically a no-go unless it was proper local and obviously depending on in your bathtub yeah in your bathtub <laughs> or depending on where you live obviously because there was different rules and regulations all over the world um 2021 it's been a bit hit and miss a lot of people in the uk that normally go abroad they've um been diving in the uk which is fantastic mm -hmm. they're like actually no mm -hmm. i can't can't go to egypt or is it really worth or they couldn't even though they might be able to travel there is it worth the two-week quarantines and all that sort of thing. Yeah. The answer is no, it isn't. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people didn't go out there. Um, you know, but yeah, like I said, they've been diving in the UK, which is really, really good to see. That's definitely been a massive plus of uh, in the scuba diving industry in the UK this year. So, with everything drop, well, not necessarily dropping, but I think the world has no, even like Australia and New Zealand, are like, no, we actually have to start opening up our borders. You know, in the UK, we're going to be allowed to travel to the United States for um, leisure, for holiday, rather than, you know what I mean? I thought this was like the, f the fourth incarnation of the United States. Um, <laughs> now, <clears throat> it's like, like Apple, it's like the United States 4.0. Yes, the United <laughs> States 4.0 coming to you 2022. But basically, is 20 because there's been a bit of restrictions and people are eager to go mm. out diving. Is mm. scuba diving going to have a big old rush? Is there going to be a, a big old push in scuba diving in 2022? Is that though for the industry in general as well as for traveling as well? What are your what are your thoughts in scuba diving in 2022? Basically, Mark. I think so, yeah. I think we're we're all at a stage where we've learnt to sort of live with like sort of the, the new world as it were. Um we've learnt to basically wash our hands a bit more frequently <laughs> and um <laughs> Uh, all that kind of stuff we, we sort of learn to live with it and yeah i think everyone's just as as the vaccine sort of rolls out further and further more and more people are sort of vaccinated against it um and yeah i, I think 2022 is that kind of it, it is going to be the season where borders are going to start opening up again people are returning a bit more to normal life and um yeah going scuba diving on holiday again and um and being sort of yeah you know what let's get back to sort of how life was beforehand to a certain degree especially with scuba diving and mm -hmm. um yeah i i think yeah because we so we had the the, so the 2019 2020 um and to a certain degree 2021 kind of lull yeah um because a lot of the manufacturers they held on to their uh, sort of their new releases uh their sort of 2020 um sort of stuff a lot of things were sort of announced in 2019 and then of course it never was released because why no one's going to buy it so exactly. they kind of kept it under the radar as it were and they're going to start reintroducing uh sort of this like new technology and um so yeah we're going to see a lot of interesting things uh sort of 
being released for 2022. I've already seen a, a handful of them. There is some exciting stuff coming forwards from a few brands that I can't mention yet. Um, they're all embargoed. Um, Playboy. But yeah. Um, say again, Playboy yeah. guys, they're getting into scuba diving. <laughs> But only for warm waters. That's it, yeah. <laughs> a new hydrodynamic bunny ear mask. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Coming with a little on. bow tie accessory. That's it. Oh, that would be fun if we could get a silicone neck seal with a bow tie um, sort of yeah. <laughs> design on it. That would be fun. Anyway, um, 2022. Yeah. <laughs> That, that was just this weird mindset that I, <laughs> I had for a few seconds. But yeah, I'd, I'd invest in one of those because that would be quite fun. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, 2022, yeah, I think people are going to start getting out. I mean, I think training figures have started to uh, sort of creep back up again. People are still learning how to dive. Hmm. Uh, of course, they want to experience these things. The dive sites have had a pretty good rest um so they ha they've still people have still been diving them oh, but course, nowhere yeah. near the uh, the same numbers so a lot of the wildlife will be uh, sort of coming back so it's kind of the perfect time to get back in the water and go to these like exciting locations um yeah dust off your dive equipment i think that's where a lot of divers are going to not fall down but realize that oh my dive equipment's been like in the garden shed for best part of two years now yeah. um and i haven't done anything with it um oh no this is broken this is rotted through or the the mice have got to this um yeah you, you're gonna need to invest in some new dive equipment <laughs> and the best place um, to do that is at simply scuba.com simply scuba.com um yeah now we do sell all sorts of stuff and we do have plenty um we, we're here to here to cover yeah um but yes, is uh, is my answer. I think 2022 is is going to be big. We're going to see a big spike of divers getting back into the water, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll be there and we'll see you there. Yeah, it's, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I would, I'm going to find this interesting. Obviously, in the UK, we um we you know people were put on furlough, people were working from home, so there's a lot more online activity. What I would love to know is the numbers from the online training agencies, obviously mainly Paddy, for all the people that never really dived before or they started to, mm. pandemic shut down, so they started doing all the e-learning, the online courses. I would love to know how what those numbers were from a new diver learning to then, mm. obviously, when things open up again, they obviously probably went to the pool to get stuff done, but I'd like to see what surge that's going to have in Egypt. Because obviously you do your part learning mm. online, but then obviously then you need to, the finish referral. it off somewhere the <laughs> referral mm. so i would love to know how many referral numbers they're going to be in yeah. 2022 I mean, that would be interesting do, yeah the the agencies they they do release those numbers um i can't remember what time of year but yeah we we do get um sort of full transparency on those numbers that would be yeah. quite interesting to uh, sort of look because they um I can't remember what it was. There was something a few years back, and they were they were worried that it was going to affect, um, uh, yeah, qualification rates. And they basically said no, it didn't really. Oh, was it the um, that Icelandic volcano? Because uh, that grounded a lot of air travel, mm -hmm. and they basically said that no, the the number of people getting qualified or being signed off stayed the same but it's just their locations changed. So it's a matter of where they would normally travel to mm. the Red Sea or wherever it was. Yeah. They just sort of, they stayed at home, but still got qualified at home. So um, yeah, I think people are still driven to learn how to dive and become qualified and they'll find out however to do it. But yeah, I imagine there has been a spike in... Um, uh, sort of e-certs i have seen a fair amount of backlash online from um i think it's directly no not um it, it's more focused at paddy because mm. they charge a like e-cert fee i think it's like 46 dollars or something to give you your electronic cert card no but there's no there's no tangible or something and a lot of people online have been complaining about this oh yeah it's like well I don't blame yeah, them, really. Why? Surely, because their their whole thing is was like, well, you can get a plastic cert card if you want, um, but it's going to cost you extra. 
now, obviously. Yeah, it always yeah. used to be just a given, um, but with plastics and whatnot, they wanted to reduce plastic production. And um, so they, they were kind of encouraging people to go down the, the e-search route. But, um, but yeah, apparently there's a, um, a surcharge. Um, so you have to pay a certain amount. And everyone's like, well, why? Surely someone just hits enter on a keyboard. Um, That's it. It generates it, it your can't... code to your thing. And then it yeah. gets in. It's, yeah, it's not even a person. It'll be a it'll be a program. There's no there there is with that sort of thing. There is no the only human element that's attached to that is the coder. Other than that, once it's all yeah. set up, the computer yeah, does it all. Yeah, your your instructor fills in all of the uh, the details, hits enter, and then when the PID uh, sort of gets sent off to um, uh, to Paddy, it's yeah. just boom, there it is. Yeah, it's generated. But, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Someone in the uh, the Paddy marketing team is sweating, um, and that's because of us, not because of all the other comments <laughs> before. It's because we just mentioned it. We are that powerful. Um, <laughs> disclaimer: We are not that powerful. I'm only joking. No, no. Calm down. Not not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> <laughs> Unless we get bought out by Paddy, um, then we love Paddy. Paddy's the best. They're the best. They're the best. <laughs> Wicked, right? I'm anyway, looking at times for this week. Yeah, I was going to say let's let's, yeah. let's let's wind this Welcome. bad boy up. Welcome back, everybody. Woo. Um, yeah, don't forget to follow, subscribe, sort of rate us and comment us uh, wherever you're listening to us because we're on all sorts of different platforms. Yeah, uh, from Spotify to Apple, iTunes, podcast, whatever it's called, MSN um, Messenger, uh, AOL, yeah, you... Lycos, <laughs> Ask Jeeves. <laughs> Rule over that. You can. Yeah, you can even watch it on YouTube. Um, yeah. Don't forget to uh, head over to our Instagram um, and uh, sort of subscribe because that's where we're going to start releasing all of the uh, some new exciting stuff is going to be uh, sort of hitting the Instagram so you'll be the first to know as well as the website simplyscuba.com. Definitely head over to there. If you join our email list as well, um, you'll get the latest uh, sort of news and um, any sort of deals that are coming up, especially in the lead up to Black Friday. It's definitely worth being on that email mm, uh, sort of campaign yeah. list because we've got some exciting stuff coming up. And we didn't do that last November. year, did we? We didn't do that last year. So. No. Well, there was no point. We had about <clears throat> five things. It's like, yeah, have, have, a, have, a, have a old regulator. Here's a sock we that we just found. Sort of switched it back on. Yeah. yeah. So, um, if you are looking to uh, sort of buy some things, just remember we have the 0% finance option, so we, you don't get added any uh, sort of extra interest rates. Uh, we have Klarna. Uh, we also have Adyen, which is a sort of payment protection program app kind of thing in there. So it encrypts all of your information. So when you're buying stuff online from simplyschool.com, it's nice and safe. Um, don't forget to check out the Two Minute Foundation. They're helping sort of clean up our beaches and our local areas. Uh, if you search for the Two Minute Foundation, to see how you can help out if you have any questions comments queries or whatever um, thoughts about anything that you want us to address on the friday show in your comments in any of the comments section on the instagram but mainly on youtube because mm -hmm. that's where we look at the most um, use the hashtag ask mark either at the beginning or at the end uh, anywhere in your comment it just means that it uh, sort of puts it right up at the uh, the top of our list to check it out uh, thank you for listening everybody and of course safe diving stay classy scuba divers the deco stop podcast is produced and recorded by simply scuba the uk's number one dive store visit today at simplyscuba.com